Okay guys, welcome back. And today's sequence, we're gonna be opening up through the chest, moving into some back bends, as well as stabilizing and strengthening the glutes and pelvis region. So if you do have two blocks, grab them, and otherwise just grab a blanket or a towel and roll it up. I whisper. Um, and you, that's it. So I will see you guys on the mat. Come over here and lay down. Okay, lay down. So using your block or your blanket, you're going to place it underneath the thoracic, so just below where the shoulder blades are. If you have two blocks, you're gonna use one to support your head. So just release yourself onto the blocks and you can adjust the props accordingly as you need to. And then just take a few moments to settle in. So you're gonna be in thoracic extension here. And you can keep the knees um, bent, soles of the feet on the ground, or knock the knees in towards one another. And take a few breaths. You know, it might notice that your breath naturally changes because of a bit of restriction when you are in this position. Notice if you have tension in the shoulder blades and just allow them to soften a bit more. Right away starting to open up through the chest muscles. And with every breath, just allow the tension to dissipate. Breathing into and expanding across this area. And really feel that you're supported by the prop beneath you. So right away, starting to shift from any mental thoughts and tension and move into feeling. So feeling the areas maybe that you're starting to feel more open. And we'll take about five, three to five breaths here. Every inhale, expand, and every exhale, just to soften and release, feeling your body a little bit more heavy on every exhale. Final last breath. And then bringing the hands, interlace them behind your head. Just to cradle the head in the hands. And just lift slightly off the prop and just bring your right elbow towards the right hip. So feeling compression in the right side, extending out through the left side body. Switching sides, left elbow to the left hip. And then just moving side to side here. Bringing in a little bit more movement into the spinal region. Working through any kinks and cracks, stagnation. And especially as the weather gets colder, at least in North America, we naturally start to curl our shoulders inward and round out our spine or from being on the computer or devices. So we want to counteract these poses by doing some openings. And once you're done exploring there, just release the elbows down to the side just to give you enough support to move the props out of the way. And then release yourself back down. And you can keep the knees bent or you can extend them out long. Just notice what feels maybe a bit nicer in your body. Just giving your self time to just soften. And if your legs are extended out long, bring both of the soles of the feet to the ground, drawing in your right knee in towards your chest. So compression in the right hip flexor muscles group. 
And then you can start to toe heel, extending the left leg out long. So it doesn't have to go out straight just before your back starts to arch. Just that far, so you wanna keep and feel supported in the low back. Pressing firmly against the earth. And then we're gonna hover this left leg. So you're gonna extend the heel toward, to, away from you and flex the toes towards you. So really pressing the heel away from you, lengthening, low belly draws in to give you a bit of support, and then release. Bring both soles of the feet to the ground and switching sides, so grabbing hold of the left knee, drawing it in towards you. And then extending, toe heeling out the right leg. Both sides might not be the same, so this is always used as information for a practice where the sides differ, dominant versus non-dominant. Then again, toes flex towards you, extend the heel away from you. The right leg is hovered, pressing against an imaginary wall or resistance. And then drop both, no, both knees in towards your chest. Release the feet flat on the earth, feet hip distance apart. We're gonna lift the hips fully off the ground, lengthen the tailbone towards the back of the room or away from you, and then fire up the glutes. So engage, you can even tap them to make sure they're fired and on. And then we're gonna lower halfway, okay? Lift, lengthen, squeeze, and lower halfway. Keep moving like this really grounding into the big toe mound. This is gonna help keep the thighs parallel to one another rather than splaying open. So keep remembering to squeeze those glutes. So we're trying to ignite, fire up the glutes. Bringing strength and fire into this region. So last 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, one, stay lifted. Baby pulses towards the ceiling. 10, nine, so squeeze and releasing. Squeeze and releasing. Last five, four, three, two, one. Slowly lower, draw the knees in towards the chest. If that was challenging, it gets easier over time and it just means that you need a bit more of that glute activation. Bring both the soles of the feet to the ground. Lift the hips exactly like we did. But this time you're gonna bring the left foot more to the midline just to give you a bit more support. Right knee in towards your chest. Same thing, we're gonna lift and lower for 10 with one legged glute raises. These ones are a lot more challenging if you've never done them before. Last six, five, do your best. Four, three, two, one, switch legs, right foot in the midline, left knee in towards you for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, last five. I know I'm already heating up. <laughs> last two, one, release down knees and towards your chest. Nice work. You can just rock side to side to massage out the low back a little bit and then release the soles of the feet onto the ground. We're gonna extend the feet actually towards the ceiling and you're gonna flex the toes towards your nose. Interlace the hands behind the head. And on our exhale, we're gonna curl up, lifting the shoulder blades off the ground, reaching our chest towards the ceiling. Inhale, release. For nine, release. Eight, continue. Seven, Six, low belly draws in if it can. Last four, three, two, one. Knees in towards your chest, rock side to side. And this time we're gonna do yogi bicycles. So hands still will interlace behind the head and we're going to extend the left leg it doesn't have to be hovering the ground because we want to keep the low back pressed against the floor. And then we're going to bring left elbow to the right knee, but we're going to really lift the shoulder blades, okay? So we're not moving quick in these. Inhale to center and exhale to twist. 
These will burn a lot more than you're used to. So we're going to move a lot, probably more slowly than you're used to. So inhale center, exhale twist, reaching across, inhale center, exhale twist, inhale center, one more each side, exhale twist, inhale center, exhale twist, back to center and draw the knees in towards your chest. Nice work. That one's a toughie. Rocking up on to a seated position, but we're actually gonna bring the elbows down to the ground. We're gonna tuck the tailbone so that we're engaged, and we're just going to flutter, kick, crossing at the ankles for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, knees in, we're gonna do that one more time. Extend the legs out, crisscrossing for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Oh my goodness, across the ankles, rock onto your all fours or roll onto the side. Tabletop position. We'll just bring the wrists, the heels of the hands towards one another and start to do wrist circles in one direction. And then switching directions. Hands forward in all a neutral tabletop position. And just start to notice how your spine feels. Notice if you're slumping your chest in between or if you're dropping your low belly. We're gonna bring this pose, we're gonna take this pose and make it a little bit stronger. So press the floor away from you into the hands. So you're broadening across the back body. Low belly is gonna draw in. So it might feel like your pelvis is really tilting, but it actually probably isn't that much. So low belly is drawing in, and then we're gonna extend the left leg back, okay? So notice right again, if you're lifting it really high, you'll feel that a little bit of slumping, it kind of feels like a hollow point in the low back. Just drop it a little bit and square the leg down towards the earth. So notice how that feels. And then release the left knee back. Right leg extends, same thing, lift it. Notice how you probably felt this pelvis dropping, the low belly dropping. Drop it in so that the low belly draws in. Much different here. Release, and this time we're going to move right arm with the left leg extending away as you round elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale to round. Inhale, extend, and then release down to the ground. Right away, switch sides, so right leg extends, left arm, reaching away, and draw in. Reach away, draw in, reach away, and release. Walk the knees back or the hands forwards, or that you're in a modified high plank. And then we're gonna lower all the way down onto our bellies. Shoulder blades roll into the back body. Lift the chest, neck, baby cobra. Exhale, release. Lift the chest. And round, release. One more time, lift the chest. And this time bring the hands back towards the hips. Lift the legs off the ground. Flutter kips for five. Four, quick flutter, flutter kips, ah, I can't say that. Three, two, one. Release the hands down by your side. And this time we're gonna bring the left arm across your body. So you're lifting up into a kind of half sphinx. Right arm's gonna reach forward, back and around, and we're gonna draw this right heel in towards your right glute. So stretching out the front of the quads this time. One full breath, inhale. Exhale, release, switch sides, right arm across body. Left arm reaches forward, up and around. See if you can grab hold of the left foot. 
drawing it in towards you just so that you feel a nice stretch in the left quad. Release, bring the hands down to the lower ribs, pressing up into a modified plank position and hips send back, downward facing dog. So exactly like we've been doing all class, low belly draws in, low ribs knit in, press the floor away from you. And after you've done maybe pedaling out the feet, find some stillness and strength in this position. Shift forward, high plank, option to lower your knees, lower, low plank. Inhale, cobra, and exhale, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, look forward, step, you can hop if you want, to the front of your mat. Ground down into the feet, hips shift a little bit forward so that they're on top of where your heels are. Inhale, halfway lift, bringing your hands to your shins, length through the spine. Exhale, fold. You can have a nice micro bend in the knees. Inhale, arms sweep up overhead and exhale, hands to heart center. Press down into the feet. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to fold. Halfway lift, shifting a little bit forward. Plant the hands, step back, high plank through low plank. Upward or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. One more time, just like that, breathe in. Exhale, bend the knees, look forward, hop or step to the front of your mat. Inhale, halfway lift, gaze forward, fold. Anchor down to rise up, arms sweep up, hands to heart on the exhale. One more time, breathe in, fold. Halfway lift, plant the hands, high plank through low plank. Upward or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Shift forward, high plank, and then we're gonna lower all the way down, controlled to our bellies. We're gonna reach behind and see if we can grab hold of the left leg with the left arm. And you're gonna just start to extend into a half bow pose. So pressing the foot away from you, grabbing hold of the left foot to help to lift you up. And then release, switch sides. Reaching the right arm back, grabbing hold of the right foot. Kicking, grabbing hold of the right foot and kicking the foot away from you to help open up through your chest. Release. And this time grabbing hold of either both ankles or the tops of the feet and then kicking away from you into full bow pose. Release the thighs down, bring the hands to the low ribs, pressing up into your modified high plank, and then sitting back on the heels this time. So tuck the toes under, sitting back in this position, and we're gonna bring our hands to our hips. So from here, you're gonna start to anteriorly tilt the pelvis. So you're gonna be taking where these hip points are, and bringing them forward so that you do have an arch through the entire spine, okay? So the chest is gonna be reaching forward, not just the low spine. From here, start to draw the low belly in so you feel really supported. And keeping this position exactly the same, you're just gonna start to come up onto your knees, okay? So you're going to keep just that natural back arch that you already had. Sit back. Chest reaches forward. Belly is engaged. Start to straighten 
the legs. And then from here, you can release the hand back and just notice, you can even look, you might be really close to your heel. You can have one hand to support and reach the left hand up and back. And sitting back onto the heel, switching maybe hands, bringing the left hand to the left heel, extending forward into your half camel. One more time, sitting back. And if that felt good for you, you can even try to reach back and grab both heels. Extending the chest forward. Release back onto the heels. Arms come forward, crossing at the ankles and rolling onto your back body. We're gonna press the feet into the ground and just moving into one supported bridge, lengthening the tail away from you. Releasing the hips back down, you can bring the feet mat width apart and just windshield the thighs, the knees to one side, then over to the opposite side. For our last pose, we're either going to move again into a supported bridge pose, so Satu Bandhasana. You can even do it with the block support underneath the hips, and just by resting the sacrum area onto the block to feel completely supported. And if you want to, and if it's in your practice, to take a full wheel pro pose, it's a highly energizing, activating pose, then you can start to bring the fingertips so that they're facing your shoulders. The heels of the hands can be lifted here. And we're gonna start by lifting the pelvis off the earth. And as you start to come onto the top of the head, press your weight into the hands and extend, opening up into wheel pose. Hold here for three breaths. And then slowly, 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 releasing yourself down. If you're in Satu Bandhasana, just release the block away from you. Crossing the right knee over top of the left, pressing into your feet, just scooch the hips to the right, dropping the hips over to the left. Into a nice twist, twisted roots, this one is called. And then coming back to center, release the right foot. Switching sides, left knee crosses over the right knee. So the knees are completely crossed. And this one, shimmy the hips to the left and drop the knees to the right. You can have your hands in a cactus. So 90 degree bend in the elbows. can use props to support the knees if this doesn't feel good for you as well. There's no race or no winning in twists. It's just doing what position feels good for your body. And slowly coming back to center. You can extend the legs out long, take up as much space as you want to, moving into a few moments for Shavasana. And don't skip out on this one. You definitely, if you've made it this far, you have time. <laughs> 